We are in the middle of the most amazing time ever. <laughs> we're humans. We're free-ish. And we can go where we want and do pretty much what we want. And uh, the robotic slave armies are not yet uh, built. We have the basic technology, uh, the trajectory. It's in all likelihood going to happen within the next generation. And this... Uh, this weird group of power brokers on the earth has, uh, they've consolidated a lot of power, but in doing so, they've uh, sprung a bunch of leaks. How can I say? When you consolidate power, it, uh, it tends to dissipate, just like yin and yang. When you, when you push, uh, there becomes resistance. And so these people are maniacal brain masters. They've been studying persuasion and tactics and human organization for generations and generations, if not thousands of years of legacy. But especially in the 20th century, when it's become very, very scientific that, uh, that they've really started consolidating the power. It's like it's out of a book. It's so crazy because technology is so beautiful. I, sup I think that the powers that be had uh, knowledge, rudimentary knowledge of electricity for, for hundreds, if not thousands of, well, thousands of years, really. And then it was Benjamin Franklin's group and the uh, people who started America who said, okay, it's time to let the genie out of the bottle. And they created a free society and they unleashed electricity all in one fell swoop. And this is where it's gotten us. I feel like we got really close to the edge where crazy people took or vying for control through every method of intrigue. And, and now we're right at the edge and it seems like God's grace is upon us. <sighs> I feel like I had a good vision uh, yesterday where God was about to eat me. And I was like, hey. And she gave me a good hug. And it was like, God, whatever happens coming up, don't even worry. It's all basically saying it's all good. I got it under control. And that really put my heart at ease because uh, I get stressed out about things. You know, there's a lot of zombies walking around um, spouting uh, their breed of knowledge. I'm. Who doesn't think they know what's going on? I mean, even people who think that they don't know what's going on still have an opinion and think that they know what's going on. Well, I'm no different, but I know enough to know that that's the human condition. Therefore, I usually take these days a little more of a back seat in asserting my, my, uh, my perspective, my paradigm perspective. Uh, the other day I published on Facebook something and uh, a friend defriended me. Well, if it was just like a friend defriending me, that's one thing. But this is a great old lover teacher that I loved dearly. I still love dearly. Um, she's known to be emotional and uh, I don't take it too personally. But I must say, it let me down a little bit. But what are you going to do? Uh, you know, we all get our information from different places and it's hard to escape the echo chamber effect on the internet, especially with the, uh, you know, the AI algorithms where they, they feed you what you want. You ask for something they give you three. And then next time you're looking for something, they anticipate your interests and they give more of you the same, you more of the same. That's, uh, that's helpful. I'll say that is very helpful. But it's also potentially, well, it's, it's steering people. When, you, when you're the one providing the choices, it's like any parent knows, the best way to move a kid around is to give them choices. Well, would you like breakfast cereal or would you like eggs? And the child chooses. But at the end of the day, they're eating. You, you, know, you want them to eat? No, eat, no. Do you want this or this? I want that. Well, you know, giving people their prerogative, or at least the illusion of their prerogative, it's very, very powerful. If you're, if you're creating environments for people 
with limited choices, but you present it in a way where they feel like they're the ones making choices, then, then it's a lot easier to, to herd them around. I used to work for a, a couple, actually, developmentally disabled services, like people who are mentally uh, impaired or socially confused to an extreme degree and were living group homes. And that was always the thing, you know, you get, if you, well, first off, if they're doing something you don't want them to do, ask why, why don't I want them to do it? You know, sometimes things don't conform to your social norms, but they're not dangerous. So whatever. But on the flip side, if you want someone to do something, the easiest way to get them to do it is to give them a choice, both of which will, or all of which will end up with them in the, the desired location or doing the, you know, get them where you want them to be. The human is really beautiful, you know, but as clever as we are and with as many cortexes as we have, we're still animals and we think we are choosing more than we're really choosing. There was a great yogi in the 20th century known, known as Ramana Maharshi. And this fellow, his main teaching, as it boils down, his main teaching is to ask, who am I? Now, I learned about this years ago. Like, 20 years ago, I learned about this. But I never quite felt like I grasped it. I mean, I got it. I read it. I read this book. I, I read other teachers talking about it. I got it. But it was only just the other day when I feel like, ding, oh, this is what he was talking about. And I've given it some thought. I've given it some thought. But I decided to go plant-based, 100% plant-based for the next six months at least. Now, I, I eat mostly vegan, but sometimes I'll have some fish or an ice cream binge or I'll use mayonnaise here or there, you know. Not much, but I'm, I wasn't strictly plant-based. So now I've decided to become strictly plant-based. And on my days off, I'll smoke a little weed and then uh, not eat for most of the day because I'll be in nature. And then I'll get really hungry and my mind will just start putting things before me. And before you know it, I'm get eating a pizza or something like that. That's not common, but also not unheard of. So the other day, I had already committed to be plant-based. And I was watching my mind start to assemble these ideas. Um, and I knew, I mean, I knew I wasn't going to eat the stuff because I knew, I mean, I knew I was plant-based now. And I was, so I found some other things in my mind that would satisfy that urge. But I kind of went back a little bit to those ideas just to watch my mind dance. And the funny thing is, who am I, right? Who is it that's thinking these things? So I would have this idea for a craving for food and within my mental sphere, you know, here's my mind self and here's my mental sphere or my self self. I'd have this desire, but it wasn't coming like organically from the inside. It seemed to be asserting itself. And I would say, well, who is that? That wh Who is it that's desiring this? Because it wasn't some organic like, oh, this will be the great thing for me. I feel it. It was sort of like asserting. The desire was being asserted on me. And so I, I simply said, well, who, who is it that's desiring this? And it wasn't inside. It was kind of in my mind, but it wasn't inside what I would consider like myself. And so I realized this question, who am I, or who is it that's desiring these things? It's not some pie in the sky, airy, philosophical, om, om, om thing. It's, it's a practical, useful tool to root out desires. When a desire comes, who is it that's having this desire? And if you're sensitive and you're just paying attention, it, at least for me in these cases, it was very evident. It wasn't me wanting these things. It was as though they were being asserted. And when I asked who it was that wanted it, you know, I, I, I wasn't holding the bag. 
And it's pretty profound. And like I said, I had studied these concepts before. That's one thing about spiritual, spiritual concepts is that they're oftentimes very easy to understand. Almost too easy. And sometimes it's better not to understand things so quickly. The beginner's mind is, that's why it's so treasured in, in seekers and, and teachers looking for students, that beginner's mind. Because things, the mind is just so ready to grasp and put in its box the understanding. If you get a new piece of knowledge or information, you put it in the box of context and you're done. You know, it's easy to understand things sometimes. Too easy to understand things. So anyway, yeah, who am I? Who is it that's desiring this? Who is it? Have a good day, friend.